What's your favorite city park? Central Park, the Boston Commons, Grant Park in Chicago? Why do you like this park? Chances are they probably contain some of the elements that Jane Jacobs discusses in chapter five of her book, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. In this video, I will explain the main problem Jane Jacobs identifies with orthodox city planning, as well as four design elements she believes help make a successful city park. The main problem with neighborhood park planning is the problem of nurturing diversified neighborhoods that are capable of supporting the park. Neighborhood parks fail to substitute for diverse city life. This is why successful city parks never serve as barriers or interruptions to the functions of the city around them. Instead, they tie together diverse surrounding functions. Only diverse neighborhoods have the power to induce frequent demand of a neighborhood park. Jacobs also notes, greatly loved city parks usually benefit from that rarity value. The four elements of park design Jacobs discusses in her chapter on neighborhood city parks are intricacy, centering, the sun, and enclosure. A park's intricacy involves people coming to the park for different reasons even the same person finding different reasons to frequent the park. People usually go to these parks to relax, to read, to meet someone, or to just spectate. Jacobs notes that people are always entertained at the sight of other people at intricately designed parks. If the entire park can be absorbed in one glance, it doesn't have any stimulating factors or really provide a reason for the person to revisit the park. Jacobs also emphasizes the design element of centering. Good neighborhood parks have an area commonly understood to be the center of the park. Long linear strip parks have a difficult time with this concept. Jacobs also talked about utilizing the sun as a good design feature. The park should have area for sun, as well as providing shade during the summertime. Skyscrapers often block the sun of a significant amount of parks, especially during the winter months. This leads us to the fourth design element of enclosures. While skyscrapers can inhibit the sun, they often serve as a good enclosure mechanism. Jacobs argues that a well-designed neighborhood park is enclosed by the buildings, whereas the park turns into the foreground and the skyscrapers turn into the background. Jacobs also discusses problem parks. So why do problem parks exist in cities? The worst problem parks are located where people don't generally pass through or don't have a reason to go to. So problem parks really exist because their neighborhoods don't have a diverse mixture of uses that support the park. If a generalized park can't be supported organically, a city can introduce different uses to bring people to that park. This changes the park from a generalized park to a more specific use park. In a specialized park, cities can experiment with the different types of uses and a combination of uses to draw more users to the park. This can include Shakespeare in the park, different sports leagues, allowing boating or fishing at a park. The more successfully a city can combine different uses surrounding a park, the more successful that park will be. Again, Jacobs argues it's the neighborhood and the diverse mixture of uses in the surrounding neighborhood that supports the park, not the other way around. The best way to improve a park is to include genuine economic and social diversity surrounding the park that organically breathes life into that park. This in turn also benefits the neighborhood. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and comment a video idea that you would like done next.